Thank you for allowing me to share uh, the first results in uh, humans treated uh, with a high foo for uh, occluding the superficial insufficient uh, venous structure of the lower limb, also known as varicose veins. Uh, this is a very common pathology with which uh, many of the frequent flyers which are in uh, this uh, room uh, might be intimate, intimately familiar, unfortunately. So. Uh, these are my disclosures. Um, the device used uh, in this study was uh, the robotic uh, ultrasound guided uh, Teraclion Echo Pulse system, uh, which uh, with uh, treatment had uh, combined uh, with uh, um, a visualization system. So, in a nutshell, how it works? It seems extremely simple. Now we'll go step by step because it's a little bit more complex. First step is a target identification. Then the treatment head is positioned uh, on the leg, uh, on the starting point of the treatment, and then it, it is compressed over the vein. Afterwards uh, begins the planning of the treatment uh, on touch screen in uh, both uh, longitudinal and transverse axis, and then the treatment can start. So you are having here uh, the touch screen, which is showing you how the mon monitoring is performed in real time with a millimetric targeting and uh, with an automatic skin uh, safety, which is very important. Here you are having uh, the um, sites uh, which are planned on the screen. You are see this in the middle of the image with a witness screen uh, image on the uh, right, on, on the left, and uh, on a hyperechoic mark uh, induced uh, by tissue heating uh, on the other side. So the preliminary results now. This is a study which was conducted by our principal investigator, Dr. Alfred Obermeyer in Austria, after ethical approval by the local, uh, by the national IRB and by the competent authority. 50 patients were treated, followed up for for three months. Uh, we wanted to assess feasibility, reflux abolition, ease of use, tolerability, safety, and patient satisfaction. And we have targeted several anatomic uh, uh, structures, which are the perforator at the calf and thigh level, the recurrences after surgery or other thermic uh, methods, the neovascularization at the stump, the great saphenous vein tributaries and accessory veins, and ultimately the great saphenous vein. Uh, some conclusions from this study. It was feasible for absolutely all the patients. Most of the cases were severe chronic vein disease uh, with uh, a long uh, uh, treatment and many recurrences after surgery and endovascular uh, uh, methods. So not at all the frequent flyer patients uh, that I was speaking about a little bit earlier. Uh, no adjunctive methods at all were performed uh, at uh, the moment of the treatment and during the follow-up in order to uh, leave it uh, completely um, objective. In terms of anesthesia, local uh, tumescent anesthesia was used in only half of the cases and uh, no other type of uh, sedation was uh, provided to the patients. And for the cases without tumescent anesthesia, pain was perceivable less than three seconds during the cycles and was disappearing immediately and was practically zero after the procedure. In terms of toler tolerability, no significant side effects, no skin burns, no thrombotic problems, and very mild uh, dysesthesia in four cases. And patients were very satisfied with this. Some examples. First one. It's a neovascularization after surgery. You are seeing how this is improving completely because we have uh, closed the source of the uh, hyperpressure in the leg. A second case, a patient 78 years old with, a, with an ulcer with a refluxing stump and neovascularization. Uh, the ulcer was healed uh, to our great surprise uh, at three months after this. We were not expecting uh, cases which were so clearly uh, positive. And another example, with uh, mm, an, an incompetent uh, calf perforator, you see how the reflux, the red and blue dots, are disappearing completely at the follow-up. And here, ultimately, one of these patients 
this uh, shows you the type of patients uh, that we are having. Uh, the patient is coming at the three months follow-up uh, and uh, you are seeing here a um, vein which is completely uncompressible, which is showing the efficacy of the treatment. So here are the images uh, at uh, three months from the same patient. And one last example with a red dot, which was a reflux and no color at all on the other side at three months. Here you see how the vein is uncompressible when treated, which is a sign of success. And to end for, uh, this presentation, the main advantages are the extreme precision, no incision for the patient, no sterile fill needed, no skin pigmentation, burst and decolorations. It can be performed without anesthesia or sedation and uh, on very torturous structures and uh, over very atrophic uh, um, uh, parts of the skin. Still, this needs to be standardized. Uh, we have only a cohort of 50 patients uh, and a lack of long-term results. And for the structure within five millimeter from the skin, we need to inject uh, saline in order to obtain uh, this uh, distance from the skin. Thank you, and I'm ready to take questions. So yes, the first question. Over there. Two questions. First, very interesting. Um, you said 85 degrees. For how long? Uh, pulse is uh, lasting eight seconds. Eight? And uh, um, uh, you will see some curves uh, over the heat distribution with uh, uh, Jeff Aubry, who, who will detail this uh, uh, more. But uh, a pulse is lasting eight seconds. And there is an exponential increase of the temperature. So the 85 degrees are practically maintained for the last four seconds. And um, are you treating, in a tortuous vessel, are you treating a single spot or the complete length of the vessel? The complete length of the vessel, because you can go over it however you want. If you want to go endovascularly, it is impossible. One more question? Okay, so we can thank our speaker. Okay, thank you.